Good morning, good morning, and good morning. welcome to worship. Today is the first Sunday in Christmas. There are 12 days in Christmas, as you all know, uh, but this is the first Sunday in Christmas, and we are going to have a, a carol and, and scripture reading time this morning. Twyla, Gabby, and, and Craig will lead us in music, so as you are able, please stand and rise, and we'll start with our first songs.
seated this morning. I want to welcome everyone to worship. As I said, this is the first Sunday of Christmas, uh, the season of celebration of the birth of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Today's worship is a service of lessons and carols without communion. And we will listen to passages from scripture and sing Christmas carols that tell the good news of the Christmas story. As I said earlier, remember that Christmas is a 12 uh, day season. So blessed Christmas to you all and happy new year. It is a blessing to worship together in person. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping online. So glad you're able to connect. Thank you, Don, for getting everything running and, uh, this morning. I know you had a little trouble, uh, but Don was on the spot. So we thank Don for his service this morning. Uh, just a reminder for families with children, we do have Pew Pals, uh, children activity bags, uh, sensory items for children as you enter the sanctuary. There's a cry room at the back as well uh, for you to use. And then there is child care in the nursery with Miss Brianna. Uh, we will not have children's worship time today. Kids are invited to stay here in the sanctuary for worship. Okay. Last thing I'll say before we continue on with worship is as we begin our worship today, we do acknowledge that Peace Lutheran Church is located on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people of the Coast Salish Nation. And we also are reminded that God has given peace a vision to be a diverse community of faith in the hilltop where all are welcome, a community that is spirit-filled, compassionate, healthy, reconciled, and just. As we know, we are living into that uh, vision and God is helping us on the journey. Uh, we do know that uh, one of the names that, that Jesus has been given is the Prince of Peace, and we know that we need peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, in our communities, and in the world. And if you will join me right now, we'll uh, share God's peace. So the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please take this time to share a sign of peace with one another. <laughs> As we're gathering back to our seats, I'll continue our worship with the word of prayer. So please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that you are a mighty God and that you have sent Jesus into this world uh, to model what it's like to live with you and to live the human life and to give his life for the sake of the world. We thank you that your power comes in such meekness and mildness uh, for the sake of all. We pray as we gather this morning to sing praises to Jesus and to hear about what his life, uh, death, and resurrection means, that we would be emboldened, we would be encouraged to live by the values of Jesus in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I have the first lesson this morning. First lesson is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 verses six through seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. 
The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the reading. I'm going to join and sing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Sorry, guys, I kind of jumped the gun. <laughs> the second lesson is from Micah 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me. One is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord is his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Here ends the reading of the second lesson. The third lesson, Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth 
to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there, and his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born. The child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, "I am here." The servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your words. Then the angel departed from her. Fourth lesson this morning is found in Matthew chapter 1, uh, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the Lord, spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son and named him Jesus. Here ends the reading. The fifth lesson is from Luke 2, 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before him, them, 
and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. There will, this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on peace for among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, as it had been told to them. Here in Zerubi. The sixth lesson, Matthew 2, 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who was born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling to, together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you, shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so I may also go and pay him homage. When they, heard, they had heard from the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. When they entered the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
Our seventh lesson this morning is from John 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, all who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will or the, of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And that is the reading. An opportunity to uh, share a few announcements about the life of uh, the church and then have time for, for prayer. Uh, so just a few announcements we have for this morning. Um, just a reminder that we're not having any refreshments after service this morning, but we did have some goodies uh, and fellowship before service, but no uh, refreshments afterwards. Uh, please feel free to stay for a bit for fellowship if you would like to after the service. Um, our pastor, Pastor John, is on, and his family are away on vacation through tomorrow, uh, so please contact Reverend Jim Reedy for pastoral care uh, during this time. His contact information is in the bulletin and announcement sheet. Uh, our own Brendan Nelson is, uh, is the church contact person until Pastor John returns. Just a reminder, the church office is closed tomorrow for New Year's Day. And uh, we are always grateful to be able to respond to God's good gifts with our own offerings. Uh, you're invited to give offering in the offering box. It's at the welcome table as you came in uh, downstairs, uh, either via mail or on our website uh, with electronic giving. If you are new to peace, we'd like to welcome you. I uh, hope uh, worship is a blessing, and if you're willing, uh, please fill out a visitor card and receive a small gift. The ushers have them to give to you. Is there anyone here? Don't want to put you on the spot, but if you're willing to introduce yourselves, please feel free to introduce yourselves this morning if you would like. Don't have to if you don't want to, but just want to make sure we want to say hello. Yep. I met Lowell and James, but they don't have to introduce themselves, but they're waving. So say hello to Lowell and James, folks. <laughs> Glad to have you all with us this morning. Uh, are there any other announcements that I may have missed that need to be made? None so seeing. Okay. Oh, please.
just a reminder, I'm sorry, my voice is so soft. Um, I'm Sandra Puckett. I'm doing the prayer chain again. And um, my information is on the insert. If you guys need prayer, you can, you can contact me directly, and I'll put you on the prayer chain as well. Thank you, Sandra. Any other announcements that we may have missed? No? We'll gather our prayers at this time, so uh, Mr. Brendan's going to help me. He'll come to you. But uh, for what do we want to give thanksgiving to God for, and then we'll uh, lift up our concerns as well. What, do, what does peace give thanksgiving for the God for? My Thanksgiving is about the Christmas Eve service. I tell you what, I've been coming here for, this is my 14th Christmas here, mm -hmm. and this was the best. The choir was outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> and Twyla, and everything was just so beautiful, and I'm grateful that I was able to be a part of all of that. Amen. Thanks be to God. Any others? I'm grateful to be here, be able to sing songs of praise. I miss Christmas because I have a stomach bug, and so now I feel like in my second home here that I've had Christmas. Amen. Um, pray, for, pray for my um, dog, Max, that he died on September, and also pray, pray for my grandma and my dog, I mean, no, my, my mom, my mom, and, and that's it. If there are no other Thanksgivings or celebrations, oh, oh wait a minute, Shelly. I'm thankful for a great trip to visit Jay's mom in Hawaii and get some really good time to get to know her better and um, have a great Christmas with her. Amen. Amen. I'll just share just a um, Thanksgiving. Um, our whole family has been sick for a month. Um, so Thanksgiving, Christmas, everything's been like in the house and the house just smells like sick. And we were just like, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. So we finally got out yesterday and went bowling and just enjoyed each other and, and just had a good time. But it just made me re just really grateful for um, family and just life. And we got a chance to share all the things we were grateful for over the year. And none of it was material. It was just about love and time um, and just valuing valuing each other um, and also this time last year my mom was in the hospital uh, she was in the hospital for almost two and a half months and so this year we're just extremely grateful to have her up and healthy and looking great um, and just vibrant and so just really just thankful to God for just life health strength and uh, even in the sickness just grateful just to have family There are no other celebrations or thanksgivings. We can move to what the peace we pray for, concerns, things you want to lift up to God. Well, I'm going to put in a prayer request that my six-year-old will come back around and actually want to be around me. Um, I was supposed to have a visit yesterday, and he just did not want to do it. It took 10 minutes to get him out of the car, even to just get him to go inside so we could all go to the bathroom so we could pack him back up and let him go home. Um, however, my eight-year-old is very disappointed. I had to deal with him crying because he actually wanted to do a visit. So just that they can each get on the same page. So I think next week I'm going to be visiting just with Jay and letting Coda stay at home. But I don't know what's going on with him. I know he's been through a lot of changes. I mean, he just went back to dad after being in foster care for four and a half years. So the little boy's got a lot going on, but <laughs> he's also autistic, so I can't like force anything or we deal with major meltdowns. So just prayers that he'll come back around and actually want to start being around mom again, because in my head, and this is still what my head's telling me, is I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, am I being a bad mom that's making him not want to be around me? Which I know isn't true, but that's what my head's telling me. So just prayers that he'll come around and want to start seeing me again. 
thanks for welcoming me to this church. Uh, I, uh, I had appendicitis this month, and I was at St. Joe's for a couple of days, and my insurance just rejected me for my emergency room visit, and they're trying to charge me for the whole thing, and I'm just like, what's the point of insurance if you can't <laughs> use it? <laughs> so prayers that it works itself out. <laughs> so, I mean, I was in the emergency room. What's the point of it if you can't use insurance? So, yeah. St. Joe's, like most, most of the hospitals, have a form that you can fill out if you can't pay. And so you could go through that, and that should help a lot. Thank you. Um, my mother, Deborah Leupold, is having uh, open heart surgery on January 8th down in California. And, uh, and also for um, Max's, my son's, or our son's uh, grandma, or biological grandma in Ukraine, um, with all these uh, missile attacks and things. Any others? I have a couple. One is that I'm still worried about my youngest having to go in for surgery. And my other one is is that we completely got an eviction notice. So I'm praying to God that we don't lose the place that we're at. Because that can be hard on me and the kids. But yeah, that's my biggest issue right now. Well, let's continue in prayer. Whatever you do to pray, do that, and we'll continue in prayer. Gracious God, we do, we do thank you that you hear us. You hear the prayers that are on our, our hearts and the prayers that are on our lips. We thank you for the, the celebrations and thanksgivings we're able to lift up, and we also give you thanks that we can bring our burdens, our cares, our concerns, um, the need for provision, uh, the need for health in our bodies and, and, and people that we love in their bodies. Uh, we thank you that we can bring it all to you. I ask that you would just remind us of your timing, of your great mercy for us, of your great love and, and compassion for each and every one of us, because you've demonstrated that by coming to this world in Jesus. Bless each person who has lifted up prayers, whether aloud or in their hearts this morning. Please um, provide what we need. Give us courage, strength, and hope yes. uh, to face each day. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're going to uh, continue our worship service. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to do a benediction here. So let me do the benediction, and then we'll close the song. So I'll do the benediction I do, I've done with my kids for a number of years. It's a, it's a spinoff of a benediction that you've probably heard in churches before. But the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. And may Jesus fulfill his purpose in and through your lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing our last song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> 